Welcome back. As you know, I'm Eli, the computer guy here for the Daily Blob, where we say, how, how dare you, China man? How dare you of accuse us of doing the types of things that we've done quite a lot of in the past. It's absolutely ridiculous. What you have to understand, China man, is I'm a white guy. I'm a white American man. That means I am absolutely and utterly trustworthy. If I steal everything in your house and then burn it to the ground, everybody knows I had a good honest reason to do it. You, on the other hand, if you go out there and you work 60 hours a week for months on end in order to make some money to make your life better, that's basically stealing from me. Come on now, China man. That's how the world works. So anyways, I think this is an interesting story. So we have this whole weird anti-China stuff going on here in the United States. And now China has the anti-America stuff going on in China. And that is hitting the tech world. It is hitting the tech industry. And I kind of think it's interesting to take a look at, again, from the kind of like that political point of view and how it can really just screw with things and why trust Trust is so important. One of the frustrating things with the NSA, right? When the NSA disgraced the American citizens in the American country uh, by doing things like such as taking metadata when it shouldn't have, by intercepting Cisco equipment and adding additional hardware so that the end users uh, did not realize that their systems had been compromised. Uh, when, they, uh, when they had spliced a man in the middle attack between Yahoo data centers, they had fiber lines be going between the data centers Centers, right? The big thing to understand there is that destroys trust in America. That destroys trust in Americans. So much of business, so much of human interaction is fundamentally about trust. Contracts are useful when you actually go to court. The fact of the matter is you rarely want to go to court. And so even when you're sitting down with somebody that you may not know and you're trying to come to that business agreement, so much is going to be based on trust. And the problem with our political establishment, the problem with our intelligence, intelligence establishment in the United States, and our problem with our whole anti-China bias is that it destroys trust, not just in our country, but in our technology sector uh, for people around the world. One of the big things I've argued about with these whole AI diffusion rules that Biden put into place and then all the stuff that Trump is doing is this whole question uh, with risk mitigation strategies if you are the C uh, CTO or CIO of a technology company that's outside of the United States, right? If you want to implement uh, artificial intelligence uh, technologies uh, into your platform, your company, or whatever, and you're outside the US, you're in Brazil, you're in France, you're in Saudi Arabia or whatever else, right? With uh, our administrations coming through and continually trying to restrict access to hardware, one of the risks that you have to think about as an executive at, at, in an out of the United States country is can you tolerate the risk if a senile old loser half the world away decides you should not be able to buy any more product in order to scale your infrastructure, right? Whenever you're scaling infrastructure, you're never gonna buy all the hardware at once. Right? One, you're probably not gonna have the money for it, and two, that's just not how it works, right? You're gonna, you're gonna buy 10,000 servers or even 100,000 servers and you're gonna build that out and they're gonna build the next 100,000 and the next 100,000 and the next 100,000 and the next 100,000, right? Think about this. If you're thinking about uh, integrating AI hardware into your systems and you're in Saudi Arabia or Brazil, you might be able to buy that first 10,000 uh, GPUs, right? In order to do your initial setup, make sure everything works. But what happens if you go to buy the next 10,000 and you literally, are, it becomes illegal to buy those from the United States, right? Can you tolerate that risk? If you buy Huawei AI hardware, you can buy 10,000, 20,000, a million, and a billion. They don't care, right? Liter literally, they will run their factories into the ground if you're willing to buy their AI products, right? So you, you can scale. As long as, you, as long as your credit card clears, they will send you more hardware. You don't have to worry about it. On the other hand, right, if you look at the United States, right, you buy 10,000, you, you, you 
invest millions or hundreds of millions or even billions of dollars into American hardware and at the drop of a hat, a senile loser can say, no, you can't do any more with the hardware. And one of the interesting things with how our legal system seems to work, right? We might even be able to say it's illegal for you to continue using the hardware that you have already purchased. Is that a risk as a CIO, CTO, you are comfortable uh, taking, right? Anyways, all of these kind of questions come up with NVIDIA, right? So NVIDIA, uh, under Trump uh, back in April, NVIDIA was told they could no longer sell GPUs to China, right? No, no, no AI GPUs to China at all, right? They, they come up with this H20 uh, version of their GPU. It was a highly kneecapped version uh, of their Blackwell GPUs with the idea that because it's kneecapped, they could sell it into the Chinese market. The Trump administration comes out with all these export control rules and says, no, you can't sell those into the Chinese market anymore. Uh, Jensen Wong comes out and says it basically kind of cost them. It was like, it was like five, it was $5 billion in uh, expense that had already been outlaid that they weren't going to be able to recoup. And then they were looking at something like $15 billion for 2025 uh, in lost sales on top of it. So they're looking at somewhere between, oh, I don't know, 15 to 20, 25 billion dollars in losses because of the export controls that Trump put in place. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, <laughs> It's Taco Tuesday again, right? Taco Tuesday every day of the week in the Trump administration. All of a sudden, Trump rescinds that and NVIDIA is able to sell the H20 GPUs to China again. So apparently we get rare earth magnets and you know China gets H20 GPUs. Uh, the interesting thing now is that China seems to be saying, eh, they're not sure, they're not sure they trust the NVIDIA GPUs. Uh, coming from Ars Technica, other places too, China claims NVIDIA built backdoor into H20 chip designed for Chinese market. So the chip that's designed for the Chinese market, China is claiming that there is a backdoor built into either the hardware or the software, which, yeah, <laughs> how, how, how dare you? <laughs> how, how, how dare you impugn my honesty? China man, don't don't you don't don't you know who I am? Uh, yeah, which um, yeah, this would be completely and utterly ridiculous if it didn't kind of sound like a lot of other crap that we've done. Uh, Beijing has summoned Nvidia over alleged security issues with its chip in a blow to the company, uh, the U.S. company's push to revive sales in the country after Washington granted approval for the export of a of a made for China chip. China's cyber regulator on Thursday said it held a meeting with NVIDIA over what it called, quote, serious security issues with the company's artificial intelligence chips. It said U.S. AI experts had, quote, revealed that NVIDIA computing chips have location tracking and can remotely shut down the technology. Uh, the Cyberspace Administration of China requested that NVIDIA explain the security problems associated with the H20 chip, uh, which was designed for the Chinese market to comply with U.S. export restrictions and submit do uh, documentation to support their case. Uh, the CAC did not specify which experts had found a backdoor in NVIDIA's products or whether any tests in China had uncovered the same results. Lawmakers in Washington have expressed concern about chip smuggling and introduced a bill that would require chip makers such as NVIDIA to embed location tracking into export-controlled hardware. Beijing has issued uh, informal guidance to major Chinese tech groups to increase purchases of domestic AI chips in order to reduce reliance on NVIDIA and support the evolution of a rival uh, domestic uh, chip ecosystem. So basically what China is saying is that with these NVIDIA H20 chips, uh, that they have geolocation uh, built into the hardware, uh, and that basically they can be turned off remotely. So if a senile old loser half the world away decides, you know, he doesn't want a million of these GPUs running in China, theoretically there is, a, uh, there is an off switch uh, that could turn them all off, which, um, yeah. <laughs> what am I supposed to say? <laughs> it's like, ah, I, I wouldn't be that surprised. Honestly, I wouldn't be that surprised. If you look at uh, the administration, if you look at the politicians here in the U.S., right, they are very, they are very caught up 
in this AI lunacy. Uh, the concept that artificial intelligence is more dangerous than nuclear weapons. The only thing that will, that will make sure that we maintain our military and economic supremacy is artificial intelligence, right? They, they have drunk all the Kool-Aid Sam Altman has been able to produce over the past number of years. And so there's this, a, this idea that if China gets ahead in artificial intelligence, our lives, our democracy is over. And so that's where we've had the export, uh, we've had the AI diffusion rules, we've had the export controls, and I've talked about this before. Yes, lawmakers in Washington, D.C., they want geolocation technology installed into the hardware of these GPUs. Another thing you have to be thinking about if you're a CIO, a CTO for a technology company, do you want that shit? Literally, literally think about that, right? The, the, the U.S. government wants to require that the GPUs that you purchase are literally going to spy on you by spec that they are going to spy on you. Does that make you feel comfortable? And so then there becomes the question, even though the lawmakers want to push that through, is that actually in the H20 chips? And that's, that's a curious question to ask. I have no idea, right? I, I haven't seen an H20 chip. I don't know enough about electrical engineering to tell you, you know, what each little component does, but it does seem to be a very reasonable concern uh, from China. And then for China, what China has to think is, you know, if they're producing so many GPUs, if they're producing so much AI hardware at this point, do they, do they really want NVIDIA back into their market, right? Having NVIDIA back in the market basically splits their own in-country uh, in market. If Huawei, if these companies are already building artificial intelligence systems, even theoretically, Theoretically, even if they're a couple of years old, wouldn't it be better for China to simply buy as much of their own AI as possible in order to drive the, uh, the innovations in their own uh, domestic uh, AI industry, push things ahead, and then they can go out to the world. And th they can literally go out to the world and say, hey, do you, do you want to buy something that costs twice as much, that has geolocation installed, that somebody halfway around the world may be able to turn off literally based off of spec, or do you want to buy hardware that is half the price that you can buy as much of it as you want and we're not going to fuck with you? Like, <laughs> I mean, look, look, I'm an American, I'm an American computer guy. I'm like, I, can I buy some of that Huawei? <laughs> I mean, like, like NVIDIA is good and all, but like, I, I, if I'm running this in servers 24 seven, I really don't want like a foreign power to be like fucking with me all the time. So, uh, so yeah, it'll be interesting. Um, so is, is this actually a vulnerability in the NVIDIA chips? Is this something that is considered a vulnerability because our politicians have pushed this idea so hard? Or is this just some kind of political gambit where China is thinking, you know what, at this point, we're already pretty successful with artificial intelligence. We don't really want NVIDIA back into our marketplace. And by putting out these kind of accusations, uh, it makes everybody else around the world uh, question NVIDIA products too. So maybe that opens up market uh, for China going into the future. Um, I get a lot of people out there thinking I'm like a CCP shill, Chinese Communist Party, CCP. Anyways, I'm a CCP. No, no, I just, I just don't like bad policy. As I've always said, good systems default to good outcomes, bad systems default to bad outcomes, and no system defaults to chaos. Basically, we have, when it comes to China, we are somewhere between a bad system and a no system. So basically, we're just defaulting to bad chaos. Very bad, very chaotic. Nobody seems to actually understand what the hell we're trying to accomplish. And I don't think that's going to get us anywhere. Look, as, a, as, as an actual technology professional, when you, when, you start, when you start looking at the sales pitch and you start looking at how our government is destroying the sales pitch for anybody that's outside the United States, 
there has to be a massive question of why they would you want to use our products be, beyond our support of Israel, beyond beyond what we're doing with with the dollar and other things. A lot of this just comes down to fundamental brass tacks. Think think about this, right? Every every country has their own intelligence services. Every country has their own citizens that want to feel powerful and strong, right? If you're the CIO CTO of a company and you're going to be buying artificial intelligence hardware, how comfortable are the other members of your society going to be that all that hardware that you're going to buy is going to have things like GPS uh, locators in it and possibly additional code that might be able to shut down the systems if our country, you know, gets frustrated at you for whatever reason, right? And this is what our, our this is what our politicians are publicly stating, right? They're so stupid. They're so ignorant of how the real world actually works when they go out there they act like those strong alpha poodles and they piss over the, uh, all over themselves all the time to prove to the world what dogs they really are they don't they don't realize what harm that causes um and so anyways right i mean i mean think about that you know that's the whole thing is like does china does China have to put out a disinformation campaign about our AI hardware? Or does China simply have to amplify what our politicians are literally already stating? Right? Again, it's an interesting, like we talk about this thing with like fake news and amplification and all that kind of stuff. Literally, literally, our politicians are coming out with such horrendous policies and saying such stupid crap. China doesn't have to come up with misinformation. They don't have to come up with disinformation or fake news. L literally, simply amplifying, amplifying what our politicians are already saying, I do think is literally destructive enough. I mean, think about it. If you're, if you're a, a Chinese you know, trade ambassador or whatever, and you go to Brazil, and all you do, you're talking to the, the, the Brazilian trade ambassador. You say, hey, 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 did you, did, did you hear what that, that Republican uh, in, in the American Congress said about AI hardware today? The Brazilian said, no. Literally, all the Chinese person has to do is, oh, go, go look at the news. I, I'm not going to tell you. Get, just go, re go read the news about their plans for how they're going to embargo AI hardware and then, and then come back to me and we'll have a nice discussion about whether you want to buy Huawei systems, right? Anyways, but those are my thoughts. Those are my thoughts. Uh, so NVIDIA has produced, so apparently they produced something like 700,000 of these H20 GPUs already. Uh, they have just put in an order for 300,000 more, so they will have a million of these H20 GPUs uh, ready to go. And so now the question will be, now that they're able to sell a million H20 GPUs into China, will, will they actually sell a million H20 GPUs into China? That will be Something to ponder, something to think about. So what do you think about this? What do you think about uh, China stating that there are back doors in geolocation in the H20 GPUs? <laughs> do you believe it? Are you like, well, probably. I don't know. Put your thoughts uh, down below. And give us a thumbs up, give us a thumbs down. Tell me how amazing I am or how dumb I am. It is all an interaction as far as YouTube is concerned. Just, just put it right down there. Don't, do not scream at the screen. Do not walk away and yell into the distance. Be, be a real alpha dog. And type it in the comment section. Uh, also, do remember we do the fireside chats over at silicondojo.com. Uh, so we're having a, a CTO and co-founder of an integrations company uh, coming on the fireside chat next Wednesday. Uh, and we are going to be talking about integrating artificial intelligence into their platform and how that worked out for them. Um, and then the next week, we're going to have the VP for AI models for IBM uh, over for a fireside chat. So we'll talk about AI models and we'll also talk about what IBM is now doing with AI. Uh, so if you're interested in those, go to silicondojo.com and sign up. And with that, see y'all later.